Welcome one and all to Umami Manga. I'm one of your hosts, Petter, and with me I got my co-host, James. How's it going? And today we're talking about volume 16 of Kaguya-sama Love is War. We are finally caught up to where I, to as far as I, as I had read when we started this podcast. Brilliant. Yeah, it felt it felt like so far away. I remember when we started it. I was like, <laughs> oh man, it's gonna take forever. But now we're there, uh, <laughs> and I am just super excited to be able to read volume seventeen after we have finished this recording, because uh, it's <laughs> been standing true. in my bookshelf for months, just waiting for <laughs> me to read it. Uh, that's something I'm super excited for. But first of all, I am super excited to talk about volume sixteen because obviously I love this volume a lot. And after all, it was after this volume that I decided that I wanted to create some kind of show dedicated to Kaguya-sama Love is War. So it really was this this volume that kind of brought me over the edge of feeling that way and wanting to, wanting to do that. And also, it was after I had read this volume my first time that I kind of knew for sure that Kaguya-sama is my favorite story, mm-hmm. just kind of in general, out of any mediums. I could see, I could see why, yeah. Sweet, sweet. Uh, so yeah, go, go through that saying, I love this volume. But... Instead of going through, well, the first eight discussions we did for the volumes of this series, we kind of did the same order on everything the whole time. I think volume nine was the first one, first time we changed it up a little bit because you was like kind of the MVP of that volume and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. we had done a little bit different vo- orders of things since then. And I figured with this volume, I want to talk about Miko Ino first. Oh, okay. Makes sense. We learned in the first chapter that she she's broken her arm and that <laughs> you has something to do with it. <laughs> yeah, very ominous. Yeah. You know, I really like how the the volume, or at least that chapter, set up the volume mm-hmm. going forward, and you know how did that, how in the world could that have happened, and yeah. especially the way they kind of embarrassingly answer like you know, what happened. Like, it's almost like it's it's complicated kind of a thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's awesome. And and we also get the little teaser in the first chapter that Miko is taking some pleasure in having Ishigami feeding her <laughs> and and helping her out with various things. So Yeah. Very interesting stuff there. And yeah, then we, we get into the backstory, kinda of Christmas the Christmas party that we talked about last time would probably appear in greater great greater detail in this volume. Right, right. Uh, which was really nice to see. I love that scene so much. It's good. It's very good. Yeah. Um, and Miko came quite overdressed to the party. <laughs> or yeah. well, or at least the way I see it, it's mostly just that it's not her style and like specifically like the makeup and I guess the high heels. Well, but... I just think well, yeah. Well, the dress the dress is fine, I think. To be fair, 5 inches, 5 inch heels are really long, really tall. <laughs> yeah. Um, but also, she is short, so I understand. I you know, I can. I guess I can understand where she's coming from, but still, it's that's really, right. <laughs> really tall. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but also the makeup, yeah. I, I mean, when you first saw her, I was even in the manga. It's just mm. like, okay, that's a bit much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it wasn't like grotesque. Like no. some, sometimes you'll see, you know, comedically, but still, it was maybe put on a little too much. I think. Right. I mean, yeah, it's cute, but it's not it's not Miko. It doesn't I didn't think it suited her uh Ray. I didn't even think it was cute. Didn't. Oh. <laughs> I mean, she's cuter without it, I will say. Yeah. Uh, but totally. you know, she's still cute. But anyway, anyway, I'm a simp. There's no more <laughs> n- nothing more to it. Um So, yeah, definitely the makeup was the biggest mistake there. <laughs> uh and uh and she also took Kaguya's advice about the perfume from the last volume. Oh, which I yeah. thought was a did, ni- nice yeah. little touch. <laughs> and, but, but yeah, I thought it was fun kind of how, you know, being the way she is on the disciplinary committee and all that, she found a loophole with the whiskey chocolates. And it's like, well, technically they're not drink. Like, <laughs> since they're food, they're not illegal. So it's all good. Like, <laughs> anything uh, to drown your sorrows. Am I right? Indeed. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, Miko. About that scene and just that, that well, that entire scene, hmm. you can, you notice uh, that they're, Miko and Ino, oh, not Miko, Miko, <laughs> Miko and Ishigami are very aware of each other throughout the whole thing, it feels like. Yeah. For example, 
um, I, I guess this is spilling into a bit to Ishigami's section as well, but there, there's a time where, you know, the one guy's kind of uh, hitting on Miko. He comments on the perfume, mm. and Ishigami is looking... Well, he's not looking... I think he looked away, but you could see that Miko is looking at him right. when, when he says that. And then vice versa, Ishigami's looking at Miko in those times. And, and then when... Ishigami and Tsubami were doing the drink shaky shaky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, obviously Miko was upset about that. So we say like to drown her sorrows. I don't know. I don't think you were necessarily saying it jokingly, but it's kind of true. I think she's yeah. her feelings are a little mixed up, and I don't think she under she quite understands them right now. But clearly, she was a bit upset that Ishigami was getting fresh with Tsubame. Absolutely, hundred uh, percent. I think you know the alcohol in the chocolates. Not numbed her a bit, you know, as as it does, right? And it made her feel mm-hmm. slightly better, you know. It, it's just kind of how how that affects you. It kind of made her honest a bit too, you know. True, absolutely. She definitely like opened up more than she probably would have otherwise, because I think it mm-hmm. was obvious that she she you know she felt some sort of jealousy in that mm-hmm. situation, seeing you and Tsubami the way they were as as they were mixing the drinks and all that, as you said. You know, she even challenges uh, Tsubame to make like that really advanced <laughs> drink, uh, just kind of out of spite. Yeah, out of spite. <laughs> I was really surprised that. I mean, I'm obviously not a drink person, but she knew all the all these terms for a pina colada or whatever. Yeah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe she studied up on big, uh, big person drinks. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it it is really kind of interesting how. We know that Miko and you have been looking out for each other, uh, you know, behind mm-hmm. each other's backs for a long time now, and like that that that's nothing new in this in this uh, volume. But of course, uh, so we also know that means that Miko has been paying attention to you, uh, like she must have been paying attention to you at, because of having watched out, or like kind of looked out for him. So I think she has pretty certainly seen his genuinely kind side. But like not directed to her, but directed to others because she has kind of been observing him behind his back. And so having seen that side of him, I think she may have fallen for that side of him. And as she kind of points out during her ramble when she's tipsy, is that, you know, she wishes he he would show her that kind side too, in a or you know, mm-hmm. so something along those lines. And she she wishes he could treat her the way he treats Tsubame just as nicely, and and she even brings up the their time together at the at the end of the culture festival. Yeah. When when they were smiling together, and in that in that instance, I think they were both really appreciative of each other. Miko was appreciative of, of uh, you because obviously he came and showed her how much fun everyone was having at the bonfire, which she was very passionate about, and you was very appreciative of her in that moment because. Well, she was the main reason the bonfire was happening in the first place. Mm-hmm. And basically bringing up that moment, which is definitely their most kind of precious moment together, uh, just like those two characters, and bringing up kind of how she wishes she, he would treat her the way he treats the girl that, she, that, she, that he loves, is all really, I th- really strong evidence, I think, of her, well, wishing that he would treat her like with some sort of maybe romantic thing yeah to be honest when i first read that i was kind of lack of a better word flabbergasted because like he does so much for you behind your back and well he he, everything he does is really because he's watching out for you i don't understand Mm. why you think he's being mean but when you put it in the context of it's not it's not seen as romantic or it's not seen as necessarily kind or, or nice in how he's doing it, then I, I could see where she's coming from. To be honest, I think she just needs to, I don't know, not be so hard on him. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, because, I mean, even even some of the things he's done in the past, like helping her realize that she was listening to <laughs> <laughs> or that her she didn't have her headphones in, or yeah. helping her out with the the campfire, or well, I guess she 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 kind of acknowledged that he was kind at that point, but yeah, I don't know. I I feel like there was moments where he was kind. I mean, maybe not like simp kind, you know, 
but still sh- being nice. The, the way I see it is, well, uh, I think these two characters have a lot in common, and I do ship them for a reason. I do think they would be a good couple together, but they are also different in, in, in certain ways. I think the ways that you goes about helping her are not in the ways that she would have preferred to maybe get that kind of help. I mean, well, first of all, a lot of the help that, well, that they give each other is behind each other's backs and they don't really notice it, uh, both of them. Mm -hmm. But I also imagine, well, for example, you brought up the earphone uh, incident uh, (laughs) where, you know, her... She, she, didn't, she didn't have her earphones plugged into her phone and that whole thing. Instead of warning her by doing, like, by kind of intentionally making the same mistake himself, maybe she would have appreciated just being straight up told by him in a more direct way. And so, because ultimately in that chapter, it ended with Ishigami helping her being misinterpreted as him more or less making fun of her making fun of her yeah but that's the thing though if he had if he had said the very very beginning yes it would have been the best outcome at the time but ishigami knew that she would get upset no matter what he did like if he brought it up she probably would have said something terrible and blamed him for it or or maybe not we don't know for sure well i think i think ishigami (laughs) had that thought but because he's experienced her he knew he felt like that was going to happen anyway Right, and so I, I don't blame him. I think, and I, I yeah, I, I, I don't think you can blame him. So no. I, I think what he did was still nice and still kind, uh, and he was trying to be. So mm-hmm. I, I think it's more Miko just being so hard on him well, uh, <sighs> rather than you being mean to her. Now, now y- Ishigami is, will, you know, kind of jokingly look down on her. I get that. But, you know, like, like the cook it, cooking incident where she admitted that he had good <laughs> fried rice. Right. Um, it, I mean, that's kind of their kind of their relationship at this point. Is so yes, yeah, so you have those instances, but at the same time, I think she's got to realize that what he some of the things he does is from the goodness of his heart. Yeah, and I mean, I, I I'm totally I totally agree with you about you, but I also think that. I also don't think Miko is to blame in any of these circumstances because she, at least the way I see it, the misinterpretations are understandable, I think. Uh, some of them. Especially especially based on the image that she has of you. I mean, surely her image of you is, is, is a bit conflicting, I imagine, mm-hmm. because, I, well, as I said earlier, I do think she has seen his genuinely kind side and that's kind of the side of him that she's fallen for and that's why she does have some level of you know maybe romantic curiosity is the best word um Mm -hmm. if that even is it but anyway (laughs) um so i i I do definitely think that she she knows that side of him but she hasn't ever directly experienced it herself and because she is the way she is kind of you know being on the disciplinary committee, being one of the many tsundere's in the story, and and just well, yeah, just being Miku Ino, she and you obviously they clash a lot, and and I think it's that that image that she has of you. With that in mind, I don't think it's I don't think it's too much of a stretch for her to assume that he would make was making fun of her, for example, in the earphone chapter. I I mean yeah I mean I guess you're missing what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is she needs to. She needs to see that she's assuming incorrectly and mm. um, eventually come to grips with the fact that he is caring about about her. I think mm. that's just her soon today side just being too too strong at this point. It's that and I also think that you need to muster up uh, some more courage to be able to help her out more directly than he has before. I think that might be another thing that needs to happen. Hmm. And, and, and for her as well. She also, well, actually, I think she did that in this volume, or at least when she jumped down the stairs with him. I mean, technically, Ishigami is doing it this whole, for most of the volume, helping her with her broken arm and whatnot. Well, but that's a different that's thing. That, that's also kind of, <laughs> that, that's also because he feels uh, guilty over it. I mean, it, I don't blame him. No, no. I, obviously, they're, I'm not saying one's at fault of the other, and I think they both have somewhat 
tainted opinions of the other. I guess one thing I'm trying to say is I think Miko's opinion on Ishigami is a little more tainted than, say, Ishigami's opinion on Miko. Yeah. We go to two fo- volumes ago when Miko was thinking about going to the party and she's, oh, I bet you don't want me there, Ishigami. He's like, what are you talking about? Of course I do. Right. So to me, it's clear that, or well, clear is not the right word. I, 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 think, it's, I think it shows that Ishigami is much more lenient and willing to give Miko a chance than Miko is to Ishigami right now. Yeah. Not saying that can't change at all, but... Right. But I think that was also made pretty clear in the, in the chapter where they had to compliment each other in that exercise where they try to get them to become friends, where after a while, you actually was able to give her some compliments. Uh, some mm-hmm. of them were pretty generic and stuff, but still, he was able to say something, whereas Miko couldn't say anything good about uh, about you. So there is that. But at the same time, as I said earlier, I do think that she has seen his good side, just not directed at her. And that's what she wants. Like, she wants to experience that good side. And that's, I think, why she's relishing so much in, in you know, having him help her with everything in this in this volume. Uh, she's really enjoying that because it's what she's kind of been wanting for maybe a long time. I mean, we, we don't know. But, but actually, a side note on that is what, that, what something that I thought of in this volume or like based on this volume and based on this is that back when you was suspended uh, for the rumors and well the misunderstanding that happened in junior high we we know that Miko was really standing up for him to get his suspension lifted mm-hmm. I think that would could very likely be because she always knew the truth behind the rumors and she never mm. doubted you or you know because because of the fact that she has been looking out for him and uh, keeping an eye on him. I'm, I, I'm thinking that's the reason why she basically knew the situation. She, she understood the situation that, and that she knew for a fact that you was innocent. And that's why she fought so hard to get him back to school. I don't know why else she would be so strong in her convictions to get, to get him back in school unless she mm-hmm. knew the truth. I, I, I mean, I guess it's possible that she felt like he wouldn't do that kind of a thing or something to that nature but i i do think she must have known something yeah and i i think at least for me the way i felt when with this volume it became especially clear that they really have both been keeping an eye on each other ever since around that time mm-hmm. and so even though they haven't been friends or anything they have both really been looking out for each other keeping an eye on each other and and yeah with that it makes perfect sense for her to to know that he wasn't guilty in any way there yeah what I what I don't appreciate about Miko in this volume, I mean, she she had a lot of good moments, but what I didn't like was, and this is part of her growth, she kept almost belittling you for having emotion or for getting upset about the whole Tsubami situation at the time, and, you know, and and I guess you could chalk it up for her being a little grumpy after waking up from the the drunk nap, or whatever. But at the same time, you know, she was kind of making fun of him for crying. She wasn't understanding why he was getting so emotional. And, you know, you kind of told her just to leave him alone. And then she got she got defensive and left. But she didn't. I mean, she eventually came back. And obviously that's that's good. Yeah. But I think there's just so much good that could have been done if she was more understanding at that at that time rather than quick to quick to judge, uh, in, in my opinion. OK. Well, you mentioned also yourself, like, she definitely, she's hung over here, so you also, you kind of got to take that into consideration. But I also, th- the way I read it, when, when you started crying, you know, the morning after, and it was just the two of them, the way I read her reaction there was, it, well, because I think she said something along the lines of, why, oh, I'm, I'm freaking out, like, why are you doing this kind of... She didn't know how to react to you starting crying because she wanted to help him but she didn't know how to is my thinking like she it 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 made me think of the time at the uh, sports festival after he had well lost the the race and miko was like it looked like she was going to go up to him but i don't i don't i don't equate that i really don't i don't think that makes any sense because that one was she was yeah i I agree that she was going to um consolidate him and uh, try to make him feel better mm-hmm. and you know I, I applaud her for that 
in this situation, she was only making it worse. And like, for example, he calls him, how, how could you be so stupid? And why weren't you considering what Tsubame was feeling? And you're impossible. How can you be crying? That's weird. Now, she does say you're freaking me out. And so I, I think, like, again, that just shows that she refused to accept, like, a, a certain side of Ishigami that's always been there. But I just think that she took the she took a little too far. And I think that also kind of made Ishigami a little bit emotional. It didn't, didn't make him feel good, in my opinion. But she didn't want to leave him in that instance. She, she understood and saw that he was hurting. And she didn't want to leave him. He, he's the one who walked away from there. And, but I think she wanted to be there somehow for him. She didn't know how to deal with the situation because she wasn't prepared for it. She wasn't like her, her mental state wasn't ideal. She was a little tired. She was, you know, she was, she had a hangover. Obviously she wasn't functional perfectly at the time. I do think she wanted to be there for him somehow, but he was the one who walked away. And even after he kind of tried to shake her off, she said, okay, fine, whatever. But she didn't actually leave him. She did actually follow him, and if she hadn't, he would have fallen down the stairs and something really bad could have happened to him. Right. I'm not disagreeing with that. <laughs> yeah. What what I am disagreeing with is, is, is how she went about it. I mean, even... I understand that there, there may have been a bit of a hangover, although it wasn't a whole lot of alcohol, so I don't think it would have been that crazy of a hangover. Well, anyway, for, for a beginner, I think you could... I mean, to be fair, I don't... I, would, I wouldn't know, but... She said later on in the volume that she still felt drunk the morning after. Ah. Well, uh, either way... I, I, I didn't like the how she went about this, and I don't know why you're trying to support it but, or defend uh, it. Well, because I don't think she acted out of line. I think her actions make sense. I don't think there's... Why I think her words are, well, not, not fine, because be, of course, some of them are a little bit over the, over the edge. But she does also act very concerned about him. Like, yeah, sure, her words maybe sting a bit but she also is clearly concerned and it's just the way she is it's just the way she talks we know her we know that's not she doesn't mean these words we doesn't, she doesn't mean these things that she says right and to be fair while it definitely didn't help you i don't think it made him feel worse because he was already feeling awful what i think it totally did i think it, when when you're trying to get over something and then someone just keeps repeatedly calling you stupid or not a man or you know uh, you're freaking me out. Stop being so weird. It's only going to make it worse, in my especially for Ishigami's mindset. Maybe, but I guess we I guess we can agree to disagree here. I guess we have to. <laughs> but in that scene, early a little earlier in that scene, I do love Miko's face expressions. At first, when she's under the impression that you and Tsubami slept together, she yeah. seems you know cl clearly upset about that, and you know probably there's probably a hint of jealousy in her face there. Mm -hmm. um, but then when you explains to her that they didn't, uh, she seems quite relieved, I think. Uh, and like, m maybe not only that, I think there, there's other thoughts going through her head too. Like I kind of shocked, I think that's shocked. Yeah. Yeah. yeah shock, shocked as to why he would kind of decline something like that. I think, mm -hmm. uh, just kind of not understanding that. Mm -hmm. And, I guess not defending her here, but I, I guess I guess you know still kind of being a little con conflicted as to like why like what 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 was that all about kind of sort of explains her words that she gave to you later on in that scene, but but yeah I guess we we have talked about that enough, but <laughs> I do enjoy the, those fa face expressions though. I still think she's a good character. Do I'm not trying to say yeah. she's bad. No 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 I understand I just, that. There there's a time and a place for everything. I just didn't think that was the time. <laughs> fair fair. But I'm glad she was able to catch him from completely falling. I mean, that was a, that led to some sweet moments. Yeah. For them, I mean, I guess it's kind of servitude, but <laughs> I mean, I think it'll be hopefully good for their relationship going forward. Um, but it, but it showed Ishigami that that Miko did care, even though that she, even though she couldn't put it into words. Mm -hmm. And I I do I do appreciate that. She was, she was, I guess she was kind of there for him to, pre to prevent that. Because with all this happening, I'm just, I'm just saying in my head, just admit that you like each other, not not to each other, but to yourself. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is this is on a whole other level with, uh, not well, <laughs> it's it's a different beast with Miyuki and Kaguya. Oh yeah. Because 
they both at the beginning is like they wouldn't mind if the other person confessed to them. Where in, whereas in this case, they can't even stomach, or at least they refuse to stomach <laughs> <laughs> that they have feelings for each other or they could have feelings for the other. Yeah. So at, it's at this point where I'm kind of like, okay, why won't you admit it already? <laughs> and you know yeah i mean i know it's i know it's i know it's hard i know it's complicated and right. they got to they got to make a story <laughs> but it's just so obvious at this point yeah it it, it but it's interesting cuz i feel like i mean yeah with with miko having seen you kind side directed to other people but never to her and to with her she's only at least the way she has interpreted it she's only ever received the the bad side of you like I can understand being feeling conflicted in that in that kind of situation, and in Yu's case, he has someone that at least right now he has stronger feelings for. So, not thinking as much about Miko makes sense in that case. Right. Uh, yes. That yeah. That I that I totally understand. I guess I guess it's more how long are we gonna are we gonna prolong this inevitable thing? <laughs> right. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but you know it, it's. Because I am enjoying the story that that's being told. Mm -hmm. What what I am saying is, it, it just it's so obvious that it hurts, and it just do it already. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. And I guess one last thing on that scene for me is just uh, I, I want to commend Miko's reflexes for being able to. Obviously, she wasn't able to stop him from falling, but she was able to well cushion his fall mm -hmm. uh, with with herself. And uh, being able to at least have that kind of reflexes while she had a hangover and was wearing high heels. Nice work, Miko. And as I said earlier, like also the fact that she followed him even though he told her to, to not follow him. Uh, I ha I, I, I'm very happy she did that. Yeah. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. Anything more on that scene? Not for now. All right. We learned that Miko sleeps... In a or on a big teddy bear, like in its yeah. lap, kind of, <laughs> uh, just in order to not sleep too comfortably, so that she can wake up after four hours and spend more time studying. Could you imagine not sleeping on a on a bed or some sort of acceptable sleeping yeah, surface man. and just sleep on a teddy bear? I mean, she is tiny uh, enough for it, I guess, but still. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Right. Evidently, it's still not comfortable if you wake up right, after four hours going... every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hope both for her and Miyuki, that they will learn to kind of ease down a little bit on the studying thing. Because it seems like it, it seems like for both of them, like it's a becoming a little bit of an issue. Yeah. Like the more we learn about them. We also learned that she's been thinking uh, about why you came to her when, when she was patrolling the area around the bonfire. Mm -hmm. uh, when she has Kobachi and, and Rei visiting. She, she brings up that she wondered like, why would he come over to her? And so I, I think, like, the fact that she has those one, those kind of curiosities and stuff, like, I I feel like she probably has been thinking about him of and course. wondering about that ever since mm -hmm. that moment, I think. And especially since, you know, that moment was a very nice moment for both of those characters. Mm -hmm. She maybe hasn't recognized the feelings as romantic, but she has recognized right. some sort of feelings inside of her for you. Right. Since since that. Well, moment. and I think if it had been any other person, she should she would have potentially fallen head over heels for that person. <laughs> but because it was you, uh, Ishigami, that she is conflicted. Um, but I do think that is, like you said, a spark of something. It it made it made an impact on her, and I'm sure it'll play a play a role as we keep going on mm, mm. anything more on miko we have talked a long time about miko but she deserved it <laughs> she's a dream novel otaku oh yeah that's right <laughs> basically she puts herself into stories <laughs> yeah go figure that's fun i mean it wasn't it wasn't too surprising to learn it but it was still fun to to get that kind of detail right right <laughs> Uh, I, I I didn't realize she liked Harry Potter that much. I guess she had a phase of Harry Potter. Right. Yeah. Probably like a few years back, she had a phase. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh. One other thing about her injury is obviously she's milking it to the point where if you know if Tsubame gets closer to you, like she sends him off to get a drink or something like that, and 
Maki makes the comment that that's potentially could backfire in her face. So I'm I'm wondering yeah. if again the Ishigami Miko Ino uh, ship is is going to happen, but I'm sure he's not going to make it easy. So there could be a moment where her command over Ishigami backfires in some way, and maybe there's some some sort of drift happens between those two, or Ishigami and Ishigami get close together. Hmm. But whatever happens, I'm sure it'll end up that Ishigami and, and Miko will get back together after, or well, get back together. We'll become <laughs> will become a thing eventually. Right. But right. for some re- but for some reason, because of what Maki said, I have a feeling that this may not go incredibly well for her yeah yeah i also had like a bit of a sinking feeling when she said that like yeah she might be right maybe she's overdoing it i mean i think she absolutely is (laughs) like (laughs) Uh, yeah true true (laughs) i think i think that especially the time when she came in and just kind of interrupted you and tsubame especially Mm -hmm. that time but also you know a little bit here and there throughout yeah. Just the way she, she kind of bosses him around. I think that's probably the worst thing she's doing in this volume, mm-hmm. in my in my mind. Uh, obviously, it, it it's entertaining for the story, and I, I enjoy it. But just looking at her as a person, kind of like, yeah, that's not super cool, Miko. You should give him a little bit more, <laughs> like, you know, time to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> she's definitely enjoying it. That's uh, That's for sure. All right, then. I guess that's it about Miko. So let's talk about Yu Ishigami. At least he got to confess. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> For real this time. <laughs> For real this time. <laughs> and I'll be honest, I did not expect it this volume. That expect that to happen this volume. Mm-hmm. I was really thinking March would be be the time that it something went <laughs> down, but Yeah. I mean I mean it still could. Well well, I'm not saying it's not. What I am saying is I didn't think that something like this would would happen before March. Mm. So yeah, it's it's interesting. And we'll talk about Tsubame afterwards, but yes. I think that Ishigami was put in a very interesting spot. So I don't, one, I don't blame him for confessing, um, especially in, in that moment. Mm. But I also don't blame him for saying no to Tsubame's, uh, Tsubame's advances. I, I don't, mm. I, I don't blame him for saying no because of his morals or his his beliefs that ha- having you know sexual interactions with someone should be between people that you like, right? Uh, that, you know right. they have they they like each other. Mm-hmm. So I I respect him for that. I and I feel I feel bad for him. I don't blame him for being down in the dumps as as he was. No, uh, because that is that's definitely an emotional moment. Very. And knowing his mindset. You know, walking down the stairway. I mean, he, I don't think he was trying to kill himself. He just tripped no. and he just like, kind of gave up. But I understand why he would be saying, I want to die, I want to die. Cause I, I've been in that kind of situation before where I feel like I've embarrassed myself or even I, I look back and think about something and it's, oh, that's so embarrassing. And yeah, there's, to- there's moments like, yeah, just, just kill me now, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, hmm. yeah, I, I, I feel like Ishigami's uh, entire situation there was relatable and believable for his character absolutely yeah yeah it, it was really really well done and he curled his hair <laughs> that was that i didn't was know that fun. was a thing <laughs> Is that a i style? mean it's, I, I imagine it's much more common that girls do it oh well, yeah um although i imagine the reason why it is probably more popular that girls do it is just because girls on average have longer hair than guys so they had they they can kind of make it wavy like that more more often mm. uh but I, I thought it was nice to see him you know make himself look nice i'll be honest it kind of looks funny <laughs> yeah i mean it definitely is a little bit like unexpected <laughs> like we're not yeah, used to seeing it, him that it's, way it's a bit peculiar um yeah. but you know tsubame seemed to be seemed to like it or at least accept that he looked nice for hmm. for the party so i think he looks fabulous I th- oh yeah, I mean I think his outfit is great. Oh yeah, yeah, that too, that too. I think the hair. I mean, I don't know. I have long hair, and I would never do that. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I probably wouldn't either. I mean, I kind of have a little bit like that naturally, but ah, uh, like a bit wavy. But I, anyway. I don't. <laughs> so yeah, your your yours is more like like 
Ishigami's natural hair. Straight hair, yeah. Yeah. I I like that Ishigami was able to pick up the fact that Kaguya likes someone. I think that was... I mean, one, I, I, again, I, I like their relationship a lot. Such a good friendship. But also the fact that he's able to pick up... Or, I mean, I guess it wasn't too hard to figure out. But, <laughs> you know, after all, after all these months, he could see it. And so I, I think that's important for eventually when... I, I, I mean, I hope they reveal to others that there's a relationship between her and Miyuki, but... Right. <laughs> maybe, maybe they'll try to keep it a secret forever. There's no way. There's no way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that was very sweet. And it was very on point for his character because, we, you know, obviously we know how observant he is about those sorts of things. Mm-hmm. Another thing I really liked was how open he was with Miko about what had happened between him and Tsubame the night before. Oh, good point. Because, you know, he, he, might, he could have just, you know, kept quiet about that since it was a very personal, intimate kind of, thing that happened there mm-hmm. but he actually opened up about that whole thing to miko which i thought was brave of him yeah for sure so oh yeah uh, i for him to get hurt or well well he obviously it was a sensitive thing for him to talk about so obviously that's why he he started crying there and yeah uh maybe you've changed my mind a little bit on that miko's words there might have cut a little bit extra there just a bit yeah because like you're saying he was kind of opening up to her exactly and she and she wasn't really she was ill-equipped for for that like she, yeah, she, Ill- know, yeah 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 she wasn't ready for anything like that at the time right. and she yeah. wasn't yeah. yeah man yeah it was just bad timing for both of them really it was it was <laughs> but but it, i mean i mean granted she broke an arm but it did end <laughs> end okay for them i think it, i think it worked out yeah the last thing i have on you is um that he well Obviously, he feel he feels really bad about turning down Tsubame. Yeah. Even though she technically turned him down first. True. That's a good point. So it's like he is blaming himself more than he should. I mean, I, I understand the two the two turndowns are on different things. Mm-hmm. Like one is kind of romantic and the other is more well erotic. But still, like yeah, I mean, I understand why he feels the way he feels, why he feels so bad about that. Because obviously, as as you said, also like it, it's a very complicated situation and it's yeah and very emotional, especially for him. Well, it became emotional for Tsubame as well, but yeah. So like, while I understand that he blames himself and or well or feels bad about it anyway, I don't think he should blame himself for that since ultimately she was the one who turned him down first. Right. I I I definitely think that Tsubame is more at fault per se. It's just you and you know this. Ishigami's mindset is not the best it's gotten a lot better but it's not where it should be so even in something like this where it's kind of rejection and embarrassment yeah i think that yeah it does a lot of harm for him yeah yeah anything more on you i think that's all i have cool i mean yeah we we, we talked about him in the miko discussion too a bit so mm-hmm. yeah I, I feel like miko and you were the two biggest stars in this volume i mean yeah they are on the cover Mm-hmm. Which I love. I love this cover, by the way. It's uh, actually like on like most places online. I've used the picture of Miko on this volume cover as like a, a profile picture for like ah. the past half year. I mean, yeah, you 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 know it. Mm-hmm. I actually thought it was her anime design, but now that I think about ah. it, you're right. It has kind of the glossy mm-hmm. cover uh, of the volume. So yeah, yeah. No, that's not. That's nice. It is very nice. Next up. How about Tsubame Koyasu? Great. I wrote, I wrote <laughs> quite a bit about her, not not as much as Miko, but mm-hmm. I her character really took a fascinating turn for me in this one. For sure. I think we see that love is much more complicated for her than what I thought before, at least with her talking with Kaguya. It's not mm-hmm. only the fact that she is going to go to you know, university here pretty soon and she wants to focus on that and whatnot. It's also the fact that she's been hurt from love in the past. Yeah. And she she herself doesn't understand why, you know, confessions and why expressing your love for another person is, is a thing. Um, and I think that's because of her past experience with with love. So I think that's really hurt her and is probably what ended up causing her to come on to you like she did. Which is really fascinating because she she says in there that she's never done it with someone before, 
and it just feels like for someone who's never gone this far and correct me if, if I'm wrong who's mm-hmm. never who's got never someone who's never gone this far to be this willing to almost express her gratitude through doing it through 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 sex mm. seems it seems a bit bit much right I agree like it's not something that I would like <laughs> encourage people to do like <laughs> Like, yeah, I, I don't think that's how you should have your first time necessarily. I mean, if it's what you feel is right, then I guess, yeah. Sure. Do I it, mean, like, for sure. Like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to not say it's, like, I'm not, I'm not going to not say that, but but it's like, I, I think there are better ways to go about it. But as you said, like, she has been hurt in love before. Like, we learned this volume that her previous boyfriend like she had a very bad breakup with him Mm -hmm. after he had cheated on her and she is uh, because of that she's scared of falling in love again uh first of all i just want to mention quickly that that learning that made me able to relate to her much more than i could before and made me appreciate her a lot more because Mm -hmm. i well it was very relatable to me gotcha so it's just it's something i can i just I, 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 (laughs) i just really feel that and sure and it's uh, it really makes it it really makes you understand all of her actions up to this point too, like her, right. like why she's been so hesitant to want to engage in a romantic relationship with you, even though it's been clear that she has definitely respected him and been interested in him to some extent. Um, you know, and she even said, I think to Kaguya, pretty early on that. She feared that, or not feared, might not be the wrong word, but she felt that if she would start dating him, that she would probably develop feelings for him. I think she said something along those lines. And that she was afraid of doing that. And now we understand why, because she's afraid that of, of starting a relationship and, and loving someone who will hurt her again. Mm-hmm. So, first of all, yeah, really feel her there. And I think it, it like knowing that now, all of her actions make sense and it just, yeah, everything adds up. Yeah. Yeah, it really was that chapter with the the Shirogane dad where we just kind of see her, mm. her at least her mindset kind of come onto the pages and it's, it's quite cynical, at least her, her current thoughts on romance and um, dating and whatnot. And like you said, I think it made what she did leading up to this volume and in the and in the previous chapters before the her talking with Shiragane, it made it make sense to me it, or at least at least at least i understand her mindset a little more I, again i don't agree with what she did and i think and she herself apologizes to you and thinks what she did was wrong is wrong the right word here like, at least it wasn't it wasn't fair to ishigami and so there's that but you you get a feel for her mindset a lot more. I I don't know if I think she's to blame in any sense. Like I I don't know if if she needs to apologize. Well, I I respect her for apologizing, and I like I I uh-huh. think that's that's cool of her. But I don't think she would have necessarily needed to because I th- what what I respected a lot uh, from her in that scene between her and you in the in the bedroom was how she was so open with him about not returning those romantic feelings. That, oh, yeah. I, I respect that, too. Mm-hmm. She she was perfectly open about that. When when he told her that he liked her, she, she told her that she didn't feel the same way, but that she would be willing to sleep with him anyway. And obviously, that was where she and you really disagreed and that, you know, it wouldn't work that way mm-hmm. with them because they just have such different outlooks on what sex should be, kind of, or at least in this moment here. Yeah, at least in that moment. I, I think, mm. I, I, I agree with, with that, that I respect her honesty, and I think that was the best thing for her, because, you know, lying in that situation would have been would have been terrible, I think. Right, yeah, uh, oh, yeah. Especially, to, well, to both of them. Um, and, yeah. so, uh, yeah, I, I respect that. At the same time, I, I do think that her coming on to him like that is misleading and misguided um but to be fair to her she didn't understand what his thoughts on about you know having that kind of uh, relationship or that kind of uh, sexual intercourse uh, mm. was so yeah I, 
it, it's complicated. And I, I don't think Tsubame is a bad person at all for having these complicated feelings. What I really hope for her is that she's able to eventually love again or at least find acceptance in the fact that she can find true love. Yeah. Not necessarily with Ishigami because, again, we've we just have a set Biko <laughs> and Ishigami will be a thing. Um, but I do hope that through this story that she will, I don't know, I guess change her mindset on, on all that. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I really hope she will stick around as a character and that we will be able to follow her kind of process, which I hope will ultimately lead to her being able to fall in love and be with someone that, that she can be happy with. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know how how high hopes I have for it because I kind of realize that she is a side character ultimately. Yeah. But even then, I it's something I really hope for. But like about about her, you know, being being that open before they actually went through to actually have sex the fact that she was so open about how she felt or didn't feel or whatever you want however you want to put that i think was awesome because i think in you know just irl you know i think that that kind of mis uh, understanding happens a whole lot between people that are in those mm. sorts of situations where one person thinks it's a romantic uh, like make making love kind of situation, whereas the other might think it's more of a uh, physical thing, more so just kind of for fun and pleasure. I, I I think it happens a lot, I imagine, but they just don't communicate well enough to understand that they're on different kind of wavelengths. So I think it. I think I thought it was very mature of her to actually be very clear about that. And 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 of of you too, yeah. Because uh, you know, to to kind of make sure of that beforehand, that, yeah. And to confess that beforehand, and yeah, trying to clear that up. I I thought they both really handled it well, even though obviously it was a difficult situation. It led mm-hmm. to some drama. I think they were both still very mature about it. I agree. I agree. What Tsubame wasn't mature about, though, oh, <laughs> was the whole train incident i mean obviously she had had planned to get him in in the bedroom so or at least she (laughs) took that opportunity which was really surprising i did not expect and i guess that's the point but did not expect subami to to kind of have a dirty move like that and (laughs) as in the volume itself it's you know the the shenanigans are back the love is war shenanigans are back yeah exactly Uh, i guess they died again at the end but anyway (laughs) yeah yeah it's interesting that she would pull that and part of me was hoping that Tsubame would become maybe not like a main cast member but a a a new uh cog in 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 the in the wheel in in the clock work maybe she will be Uh, maybe she will yeah you're right maybe she will be uh and i hope i actually kind of hope so because it would be it would Mm. be neat even though we kind of know already what's going to happen. Well, well, I mean, <laughs> knowing what's going to happen, I, we don't. But that we, we can see the writing on the wall. I think it would be great to have Tsubame kind of ha- try try to play some games, you know, some Love is War games with Ishigami as well and kind of bring in a, a love triangle in that sense. Then again, you you would make it so it's, one person has to have their heart broken, but it's going to happen anyway. So might as well make it entertaining. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But yeah, I, I definitely hope she sticks around too. Uh, and as I said, also like at this point, I don't know any more than you do. So it's, you know, she definitely might stick around. My last thing on Tsubame is that based on, well, based on firstly the bedroom scene and also the scene earlier, um, during the party when she's teaching you how to blend drinks and stuff, when she's, like, standing behind him with her arms kind of wrapped around him, teaching him how to, like, shake the bottle or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, based on those two moments, I sort of have a little bit of suspicion that even though she doesn't have any romantic feelings for him, I sort of feel like she probably, possibly, at least has a physical attraction to him. Yeah, I think because I I think otherwise she wouldn't have really well I I don't know for sure but my guess is that she probably wouldn't have done either of those things if she didn't feel physically attracted to you. 
you know, funny thing for me is when when I first saw the scene, the scene with, you know, the making the drink and mm. her, her showing you, I, I didn't really think too much about it. I mean, I, I from you's perspective, it's like, oh, man, he's getting so close to her. That's great. <laughs> yeah. But for her, I just thought she was just kind of teaching him, you know. And then the next chapter happens. Mm hmm. And it's, so it's, you got to go back to that. It's like maybe she was trying to get close to him there and, and yeah. I don't know, like flirt with him in that in that sense. I think totally. I mean, why yeah. like I, why would, would you stand it like with someone in that way if you didn't have some kind of physical attraction or, 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 or some kind of interest in the person in general? Right. Well, even going as far as to as, you know, as the bedroom as they went, mm -hmm. I think that shows that yeah, at least she's not a objected to that idea per se even oh, if for sure. you know she didn't have romantic feelings mm -hmm. so yeah it's, it's very very interesting very yeah. complicated yes <laughs> anything more on Tsubame? yeah so what else is complicated is the way she speaks sometimes apparently oh apparently yeah she's a memester or she speaks in memes which i you know i totally relate to you know she's one of my people <laughs> <laughs> Although yeah. it, I guess it depends on what kind of memes she's talking, or she's speaking through. That is that that is interesting. Uh, I think Ray says that she speaks in memes when she's having fun, or she says that early in the volume. But there is one later instance when I don't think that is entirely the case. When they're back in school, mm -hmm. and you know, right before Miko kind of inter interrupts them, Tsubame says, "Your poyo is acrid." <laughs> And, and she has this expression. It feels like she was saying something very serious at the time or like something, mm -hmm. you know, meaningful. Do you have any speculations as to what that could mean? So my first thought was you're unfair. Hmm. Well, or, or like you're unfair or you're too kind or something like that because of her, him kind of forgiving her, but also wanting to help, help her or I guess... I don't know how he puts it, but basically getting her to the point where she likes him. I mean, I guess I could. It could also be something less negative, maybe. Yeah, like I could definitely interpret this as either some kind of like sort of negative, but maybe not super negative, and mostly maybe just kind of bashful kind of thing, mm -hmm. or like like maybe she's complimenting him, or or I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we'll mm -hmm. find out. I hope we'll we'll find out. Yeah, I think so. I mean, yeah. I don't. Maybe not exactly what she said at that moment, right. but but at least how she feels. Because right. I feel like what she is trying to say here is something related to. Well, I I imagine it's something related to how she feels, and I very much look forward to learning more about that, perhaps, and yeah. or or and how her feelings have progressed and what her thoughts are on all of this. Mm -hmm. Yep. Next character. Maki Shijo. <laughs> okay, let's do it. She got a, do it. She, got, she got a chapter all to herself. It was funny. Yeah. And part of me thinks it was just an excuse for Akasaka to travel to India on company <laughs> time. Right. Uh, you know, good good for him. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it was it was a hilarious chapter. I didn't oh, really yeah. learn too much about Maki per, per se. I don't know if you did during that. Not as much as I would have hoped to learn in an entire chapter, but <laughs> yeah, you're, you're you're absolutely right. Um, it was entertaining, well, though. I liked it. It was entertaining, and it was nice to see kind of how she was able to, well, enjoy herself, even though she kind of always has this shadow hanging over her. Mm -hmm. It was nice to see that she was able to find some joy in various activities that she was able to do as a tourist over there. And it was nice to see that she has a twin brother. Yeah, did not expect the twin part. Right, yeah, it's not too common. <laughs> but what she learned in India was two things. She learned that excessive love can destroy you. And th th I guess that, that was like the only like actual, like or at least the way I saw it, that was like the only meaningful thing we got from that chapter. Or mm -hmm. potentially even, like maybe it's not even meaningful, but it's, <laughs> it's the only thing that I read as having potential like meaning later on. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking maybe that's something that, that'll come back later, that maybe having learned that wisdom during her enlightenment period in India might come in handy, potentially. Or I'm reading too much into it, I don't know. But the other thing <laughs> she learned when she was over there was that, that she likes Japan more than she likes India. Uh, which, well, I, that, that's kind <laughs> I of don't always... Blame her. That, that, that's often the case. When you're, you know, when you're away, 
uh, you kind of miss being home sometimes. Yeah. I like how she she's able to read the room quite a bit in, in the few chapters she's there. Like when Tsubame goes to apologize to Ishigami about what happened, she quickly leaves the area. She's kind of like, I'll, I'll leave you guys to it. Appreciate that. But she's also able to point out Miko's kind of mistakes, not the right word, but her controllingness over Ishigami in that moment. Yeah. And bring up some important parts. So, I mean, it, it's nice to have that third party observer, I guess. <laughs> Absolutely. I just hope she won't always have to be the third party. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah. but you're absolutely right. Will she ever get love? I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. But I think Maji, Maji, uh, Maki uh, saw some similarities with how Mika was treating you and how Nagisa has been treating Tsubasa. Oh, really? In kind of the, the bossing them around bit. I think that's what she was referencing when she was kind of like, uh, or like uh, she said something about like, this looks familiar or, or like I'm having flashbacks to something or like, I, I can't remember how she put it, but it, it was something along those lines. Hmm. And, uh, I, I think what she was, what, what, my, what, what Miko reminded her of there was, was Nagisa, I think. Hmm. Uh, but, it, but it's really just this one action. I, you know, ultimately they are very different characters. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Next up let's talk about kobachi osaragi okay i called it i said in the previous like she was going to be you know a secret beauty behind those glasses now granted she hasn't taken off those glasses yet yeah but it, it didn't go down in the way that it usually does usually it's it's kind of a you know she she you find out how beautiful she is and she but she's embarrassed by it or she can't she can't show it to anybody or for, for whatever reason because someone's trying to find her or some, some cliche thing like that. <laughs> yeah. Nope. She's like, I know I'm beautiful and I yeah. rock it. Like, I, I know it. Like, She's beautiful and she knows it. She knows it. Yes. It, yeah, so I, I like that kind of character twist-ish for her. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting dynamic. It's a lot of fun. And something that I noticed, and you may have probably noticed it too, and this isn't the spoiler since it's literally the very next thing you would see after having finished reading volume 16 is the cover art on volume 17 where uh, we yes. actually get a little bit of a glimpse of one of her eyes. Yeah. Which is very exciting. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, they better not be just teasing like one like, you know, one little bit of the eye and that's it. Like, come on! Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I'm really hoping for in that volume to actually see both of her eyes in full in that. Right. They toot her as the most beautiful girl on campus well no th not just that the most beautiful girl to ever appear in shonen jump oh yeah that's right <laughs> it's like whoa that's high that's very high phrase <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of waifus uh, a lot of waifus you're trying to upset very <laughs> yeah wow uh she reveals uh miko's secrets to ray <laughs> against miko's will <laughs> But it's funny, you know, they, they, they're like best friends, so of she has the right to do that. Yeah. <laughs> She's earned that right. And she broke up with this the, with the pep squad leader. Yeah, I guess they went on a couple of dates and that was it. Yeah, she, she never really felt that like it, it, wasn't, it wasn't right. It does make me wonder if she really just did that to kind of push Ishigami or Miko in a certain direction. Mm. Um, right, we talked about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. But... <sighs> Yeah. There was something she said at the end of the chapter that we that, that her beauty is revealed. She kind of gives co a little bit of commentary on seeing Miko and Ishiga or Ishigami serving Miko. Mm -hmm. And she says this is not good. Like exactly. this is not going to go well. And I was sh kind of shocked because I thought being the Ishigami Miko Ino shipper that she seemed to be, she would be right. excited about this, but instead it's like, oh, this is not good. Like she, Miko will find out eventually, and it's like, what? Like what do you, what do you, what is so mysterious about this? Yeah, so, I I had the same worries or or not worries, like just kind of confusion <laughs> mm -hmm. there. Do you have any speculation yourself about that? Like what it could be? Like why why is she referring to that as a bad thing? 
And she, she even says, like, really, really bad. Like, she, she mm-hmm. says it several times. Like, why? I think part of it could be that it's a convoluted way of putting it that Miko's been lying to herself this whole time and that event- and eventually this will kind of bring that to light and then mm. she won't be the same Miko anymore. Hmm. Which I don't know is that, but why would that be something she wants? The other idea I had was the chapter is called Miko can never love or wait, no, 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 no. I got to, I got to quote it. Miko, you know, cannot love or can't love. Can't love. And maybe, although sometimes the chapters are a little more cryptic than this, but maybe Osoragi thinks that, thinks that she can't love because she can't love herself. And Hmm. if she gets too far into it, she's going to have a breakdown or something. I, I don't know. It's kind of, I, what, do you have any ideas? I'm trying. Uh, yeah, 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 no, <laughs> I, I, I commend you for trying. I, I have like a, a pretty weak kind of theory, but it's, and it's very simple, probably, uh, basically just that she thinks it might be bad that if when Miko fully realizes her feelings, mm-hmm. that when, when she does get to that point, which it seems like it might be getting closer to that just based mm-hmm. on how much she and you are interacting right now mm-hmm. that it would get complicated like more complicated than just because of how their relationship has been up until now and that if she does realize that she is in love maybe even mm-hmm. then she would be very much more conflicted like basically mm-hmm. it's, 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 it, it kind of is that Kobachi is kind of trying to backpedal on her ship maybe it's like she <laughs> thought it was a good idea but now that she sees it is like wait oh no but what if like maybe she's kind of getting cold feet in a way like if they actually do fall in love now like how's mm. that going to affect their relationship that they have like it might become chaotic um especially with Tsubame still around like right because cause I think when she was pushing f- toward like f- for them or at least the way we interpreted it a few volumes back when she seemed to be pushing for their ship to be a thing. Mm -hmm. She didn't know about Tsubame yet. And, Oh, but now chances are she does. And so maybe that could also be a reason that I just came up with (laughs) that. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why she thinks it's a bad idea because that could make things very complicated. If you suddenly has two girls that are potential love interests. Right. So, if you go back to that that moment where she said she would, you know, she ended up dating the cheer squad leader guy, it sounded like she was trying to push Ishigami towards doing something, you know, to asking someone out or, or something like that. Now, yeah. at the time, I thought it it could be that she was trying to push Miko because why would she be trying to push for, towards Tsubame? But she may have already noticed that you had a thing for Tsubame as well. And so maybe she was trying to push him to move on and, and, you know, get a relationship with somebody. And so maybe she knows that that's going forward right now, but because Miko is, could potentially start growing in her feelings for Ishigami, that's, that's could be bad for her because you has the feelings for Tsubame instead. Mm. And that may, there may be some heartbreak there. Yeah. Eventually kind of what you were saying, but, more adding the Tsubame part to it. Right. And I think the situation is really built up now for like, it's, it's, a, I feel like it's a pretty high probability that someone's going to end up sad in the end. Mm-hmm. Possibly. I mean, of course it depends. We, we both feel pretty confident that you and Nico will end up together. Right. But yeah, then there's Tsubame who seems to like, maybe like, even if she doesn't have romantic feelings for you, she still has some sort of feelings for him. I feel like there is yeah. something there. There's something, I and even even if there is heartbreak for Miko, I think eventually it will be it will come around and and turn good for her with Ishigami. Not saying that I want him to break up with Tsubame if that's a thing, but again, just the way the story is going, I don't I just don't I don't see them not becoming a thing eventually. Yeah, absolutely. Anything more on Kobachi? I think that's all I got. All right then. Then let's talk a bit about Chika Fujiwara. Okay. Of course, she would use a, an electric bicycle to exercise. <laughs> <I know. laughs> it was just, 
girl. Uh, uh, she's so happy. Like, oh, this electric oh, bicycle is so easy to like ride up the hills. <laughs> it's like slap. Ah, uh, oh, no. <laughs> oh, but but she she eats some spicy ramen in this volume. <laughs> Yes, it gets very spicy. I, I I love how they bring back the the whole ramen shtick and with the old yes. man and everything. It it was it was good, good times, good memories. Right, absolutely. So now we have met three out of the four ramen kings of Tokyo. And the fourth one is the woman, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's the lady. Can't remember her name, or ex- I, well, I can't even remember exactly what she looked like. But I I, I do think it, the fourth one was was a lady. Yeah. But yeah, I gotta sweat all those calories away, Chica. <laughs> a bo- boba tea, man, or bubble tea, whatever they call it. Like, yeah. You know, it's the miracle drink. You know, there's no calories in this. Yeah. If it's frozen, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Come on, Chica. Anything more on Chica? You know, I, I don't think I have anything unless, unless you do. Mm. Uh, well, the only thing was like, like I'm, I wasn't surprised to, to learn that she cheated in the ramen battle. By eating ice cream. Oh yeah, I you know mean, <laughs> it's up her. It, it it fits with her character. She, well, she is a cheater. We know that. <laughs> I and, and and the funny thing is, to her, she probably doesn't think it's cheating. She just <laughs> yeah. she just got like yeah, this just makes sense to do. Right. Yeah. True. <laughs> so true. Then uh, let's move on to Kaguya Shinomiya. If we have a little bit there, perhaps I I do have mostly I think romantic stuff for Kaguya and Miyuki this volume, but mm-hmm. um. One little thing that I had on Kaguya, at least for me, was how, how she gave you the ring that, yeah. he, that she put on his pinky finger. That was a really nice light little help thing that I really enjoyed. Yeah. Again, it just shows that they have such a great friendship and they're here for each other. Mm. Um, yeah, I, 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 like, I like seeing, not that it doesn't exist at all. I mean, there's plenty of friendships like that on the real world. But sometimes in media, you don't see you know, people of, or not too often, people of the opposite gender just be platonic friends, you know? There's no romance involved. It's just supporting each other as they go about their own romances and trials in life. I, I Yeah, I really like that. Yeah, me too. And especially with, like, the history that they have, these two characters. Like, ha- yeah. as, as shaky as it started off in the beginning. Right, yeah. Just where it is right now, it's awesome. It's been a pleasure to follow along with so true. That was the only thing I had on Kaguya. So, so go with, go ahead with whatever you have. <laughs> She's kind of treating treating Hayasaka worse in some aspects. Like mm. meaning she's belitt- she's kind of belittling her for not being in a romance or it's like, "Oh, you wouldn't understand cuz you're not in a romance" or something like that. And I mm. I mean, obviously, I don't think it's done in bad faith or anything like that, but I think it was a little mean of her to put it yeah. put it put it in that way so i i kind of felt bad for hayasaka and uh-huh. you know it was like oh kaguya why don't do that right but <laughs> you know I, I guess she was being ice she was ice kaguya at that point so yeah uh, yeah I, and it also explains why hayasaka is acting the way she is yeah not not super cool kaguya i understand she's like very much in the moment now being like in this new kind of phase with miyuki Mm-hmm. But but still, like yeah, she she needs to be a little bit more considerate. <laughs> right, totally. Yeah, and that that goes for the last volume too, when she was like lecturing Chica about carbs and <laughs> and stuff like that. Like, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anything on Miyuki Shirogane? I have nothing on him specifically on the character. Is this the first time he's worn regular clothes with Kaguya? Yeah, I think the only other time when he has worn regular clothes must have been to his sister's. Uh, a culture festival, right? I think so. And Kage wasn't there, so yeah, it it probably is. Well, there you go. <laughs> First time for everything. Yeah. And that's all I have. <laughs> Sweet. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Like they they had like two full chapters at the end there, but of this volume, but but yeah, mm-hmm. mostly most of it was romantic, so I think we might have some more to say there. Sure. Next character I want to talk about is Ai Hayasaka a little bit. I mean, all, all of the ones that are left are just a little bit probably on each, but Ai Hayasaka, we talked about her a little bit earlier and how she 
is longing she's longing for her first kiss so much that she tried to kiss chica <laughs> why would she do oh, gosh. that that was so uncalled for <laughs> it really was it's like i understand her wanting to kiss someone like we know that she has been kind right. of very curious about those sorts of things especially now that kage is talking about it all the time mm-hmm. but chica wow okay <laughs> like what <laughs> uh part of me oh. wondered if there was there because they're, it looks like they're at the mall when it happened, at least according to the flashback in that first chapter. Oh, yeah, there was a brief flashback there. Yeah. It was a brief flashback. Right. I, I even wonder if we're going to ever get that expounded or not. We, we may or may yeah, not. Yeah, I was wondering about that too, actually. <laughs> but if we don't, it could be that the reason why she did that was Miyuki and Kaguya were walking in front of of the you know the, the restaurant or whatever they were at in mm. order to hide them she tried to cover chica's face and so it came off as a kiss or it, it really oh the face. yeah that's from the same day yeah that that's what i'm saying like, i think it's the oh, same day because they look yeah. like they're dressed in the same clothes exactly yeah that oh that's nice i, did, I didn't put that together nice but i but i don't know i could be wrong it could be a totally <laughs> different thing i mean it, from, and, uh, for sure yeah it could and be maybe hayasaka I, I mean, lost her mind and was like i just need to make out with something <laughs> uh yeah i i mean seeing as this volume like it it continued being flashbacks all the way until the very end of it it mm -hmm. never actually went back to i guess present day even at the very end of it, it never went back to that True. So it's possible that the next volume might continue with the flashbacks, potentially. Mm. At least a little bit. Well, I guess it did go to the current time once. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or back right. at, at least back and forth. Right. Like in the middle or so. Mm -hmm. Right. It, it, it did end off in the past. Well, yeah. 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 It did end off in the past. Yep. Yep. So, yeah. It, it could it could keep keep those up. So there, there's some potential there. Anything more on I? Nah. All right, then. Uh, then let's talk about Nagisa Kashiwagi. She is clever. She's very clever. She caught them cuddling or kind of being all lovey-dovey together, but, <laughs> but she decided to protect them in there by, you know, putting the sign on the door. So does this mean Kashiwagi and Hayasaka are the only two people that know Miyuki and Kaguya are going out? Hmm. I can't think of anybody else who would know that. Yeah, that might be it. And, and, and we know both... Uh, well... Hayasaka will keep the secret, although she, maybe she's at the point where she's about to <laughs> burst. I don't know. I don't know. But Kashiwagi, I'm pretty sure she'll do everything she can to to protect it. <laughs> she she might tell Tsubasa, maybe. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, Maki might know too. Yeah, I was actually just about to say. I think she put that together. Yeah. Because uh, right. when she's in India, she thinks about like her different friends that are in relationships and stuff. Gotcha. So technically, it's three people who know then. If that's the case, yeah, potentially four if you count Tsubasa, if he if he knows. I don't. I he does. He's not a real character. I'm just, I'm just I'm just, he's of no importance. He has he has grown a little bit in importance, a little bit. Like, yeah, he has. He has a name. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> and he has been part of the story since volume one. You're right. You're right. You're right. I give but, him a hard time. <laughs> he, I mean, he deserves to get a bit of a hard time, <laughs> I think. <laughs> um, so, anything about Nagisa? I think that's it. All right, then. Let's talk about Rei Onodera. I think she is... I'm unsure... Okay, so I'm unsure about Osoragi's loyalty now. Uh, but <laughs> Onodera is definitely on team Miko. Like, Miko Ishigami. I, I, think, I think she sees something there. Oh. And maybe, maybe. The, my evidence for that is when that one guy was kind of hitting on her and said, telling her that her perfumes, perfume smell nice, she butts in between them. Oh, yeah. And, and says, did. let me get a drink. You're right. And the guy kind of backs off and, and scoots, off, scoots away, yeah. almost as if he, he read the room or he read something. And there's another moment where I, I think it's when Ishigami and Tsubas, uh, Tsubasa. Tsubame are oh. doing their shake a shake a thing. She is looking at Miko, who is looking at them. Who's you know she looks like she's a bit 
frustrated or upset about what's happening mm. and or not uh, Miko looks like that so and Odadetta is noticing that so right. I I think she is picking up on that and definitely is at least supporting Miko in some way yeah at, at the very least it, at the very least but I also think there it could be that she's trying to get or at least would like for them to get together maybe that I at least definitely agree that she has grown you know a, a friendship with Miko at the very least and so yes. yeah, she's supportive of Miko in, in that regard not mm-hmm. not as sure about like the specific Miko you ship Fair. But, I mean may, maybe though like I'm not against that, that possibility I just no, I'm not I understand. sure about it <laughs> but yeah that, I'll be honest that part is a bit of a stretch but that, that <laughs> where she was looking at Miko who when she was upset about hmm. you know the Ishigami in, in Tsubasa that is what kind of gave me the idea uh, for it, but right. at the very least, she is looking out for her and getting in between that guy hitting on her. Yeah, I think was a you know a pro Miko move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. The only thing I took note of for Ray was that she, you know, she was the one who told uh, told Miko that the makeup didn't suit her, uh, <laughs> and that and that was the reason why she removed it. And so yeah, you can you can trust Ray. She she knows what's good and what isn't. So yeah. Next up, Mr. Shirogane, the fortune teller at the mall. <laughs> <laughs> scamming, scamming teenagers left and right, but also yeah. helping them at a modern price. Yeah, honestly, I thought like the the kind of his monologue that he had there in that chapter, I thought was really nice. Both the things he had to say in the role of the fortune teller, and also the little bit he said later on as the middle-aged man that he is. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, there was a quote that p- part, part of his monologue was, he said, eternal love doesn't exist. However, true love might exist. And I was like, nice. <laughs> I like that. And, and like, I, I love how, how Akasaka has kind of been building up this concept of true love ever since mm-hmm. that chapter where, like, you know, where it was introduced as, you know, this kind of just split thing where some people believe in it, some people don't, and it's kind of viewed by a lot, a lot of people as something very childish, kind of, and how it was introduced kind of mostly as a joke there, but then it's it's appeared ever since between that and now. It's, it's appeared, like, more subtly here and there as well, and I feel like it's something that Akasaka is kind of trying to build up in, in, in a really nice way, I think, kind of implying that this true love is something that will exist between... Kaguya and Miyuki. Mm-hmm. I still think it may be a loss in translation kind of a thing. Remember how we were talking about... I, I do. It, it, you remember that? Well, basically that the Japanese manga uses the term true love, but in English it was like churabu. And to them, it seemed like that concept was incredibly childish, something in fairy tales and whatnot. But I think the actual true love they're using here, they're not using the English word. They're using a, a Japanese equivalent. Now... I can't prove this because I don't have the Japanese text on me, but it would be a little strange if they are still talking about true love in the the English. I don't think for it. So, well, my my take because I definitely thought about that as well because uh, I remembered our conversation about it, mm-hmm. and my my thinking about it is like for the, uh, I guess like maybe maybe I'm putting putting too much stock or faith in the English translation here. Mm-hmm. Maybe, however, the way I basically basically view this is that why why would they translate the fairy tale love and real love both into true love, like having that exact same phrase? Why would they do that? If because I, I get translating true love like to do love into true love because it's mm-hmm. it's literally those words, but if they if if in this volume when they talk about true love. They they even bold like make make the word true bold in the text when he says true love. I feel like there is a correlation there because if there wasn't, they would have probably used like maybe referred to as it real love instead or some something that isn't literally true love. So based on that, I I think it's supposed to be uh there's I think there's supposed to be a connection there. It, the it all that matters is if what the Japanese says the English word for true love. Or the Japanese word for true love. Now, the, now the 
English text could be trying to say that, say that message. But I think that the Japanese, uh, if it wants to keep using, enforcing true love or the, you know, the, the English word, it would have used that, that word rather than a Japanese equivalent. But don't you still like the idea of having the true love kind of as a theme going throughout the manga? I like the idea of true love, but I, I don't think true love is a concept that is childish to certain people. I, I don't think Kashiwaki thinks actual true love is childish. I think she just thinks the concept of fairy tale love, the word true love is childish. That makes sense? Well, the thing is, like, yeah, yeah, it, it does. Uh, but I think, especially, like, when Mr. Shirogane says it in this volume here, he says that true love might exist. Like, it's even a thing, like, when he's referring to it here, it's all, it's still a very uncertain thing, like, something that probably a lot of people don't believe in. It still gets the same treatment as it did all the way back when it was first introduced in the story. So, based on that, I, I think it's the same thing. Yeah, I can see that now, but... It, we also have to understand that Tsubame is going through, you know, a lot of conflicting conflicting feelings. So maybe she doesn't, she kind of struggles with that concept of, of love. I think you're being too nitpicky. I think these are the same true love. I, I don't think there's anything more to it. I really don't. I, I mean, yeah, I, I could be wrong. Um, but anything more on Mr. Shirogane? Uh, it, it was nice to see him give advice, like we said, and... I, I thought it was sweet as well. So Yeah. And I, I do believe in true love. So there you go. <laughs> nice. And briefly about Mikado Shijo. He has the same little fang as his sister does. I thought that was very sweet. But I don't really have anything else on him. Nah. But it was cool to see him. Yeah. What do you got on Sing <laughs> Maki's tour guide? <laughs> Oh, uh, <laughs> I, I don't have. He looks very realistic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was honestly hilarious. Like his art style is just completely different. It was especially funny when like he put like the scarf over Ma Maki's head, because like I think that's like I don't know if it's the only panel where they're in the same. Now, it's not the only panel where they're, where, they're, where they're in the same panel, but it's like the only time when they're like super close together, and you just see like the clashing art styles there is really funny and I guess all, all the backgrounds and stuff in this chapter as well are like more realistic than I, I think they might even be sort of photos in some cases or at least like oh yeah totally. photos that he kind of drew over mm -hmm. or stuff like that which is fun do you have any other character that you'd like to bring up nope I'm all good all right then this brings us into the comedy uh, there were se several quotes in this volume that I thought were hilarious. <laughs> the first one is when Miko was getting drunk, and you accuses her of being drunk, and she responds, like, really drunkenly, like, the, the person who's asking people if they're drunk is the one who's drunk. <laughs> like, that's so drunk. <laughs> uh, Miko. Well, my favorite, one of my favorite lines from Chica, it's, shut up or I'll kill you. I mean... We've, we've heard that. Oh, yeah. I just, again, her expression is just beautiful for me. And yeah. <laughs> it's great. It, it, yeah, that was awesome. And that, it, that was such a big panel, too. It was like almost a full page. It was like, wow, <laughs> that's, that's her Shut face. Shut up or I'll kill you. Like the sarcasm there or whatever <laughs> you want to call it is like, wow. <laughs> I, I uh. love the, I, going back, I love the last page of 155 where... She accuses him of not being able to get it up, and he's like, "I'm still hard as a rock." Still, <laughs> her expression. She's like, "What?" <laughs> yeah, that was also definitely one of the funnier moments. Oh my god. She looks down, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she she's looking down at something. Although his back is turned. Right. But still, but still. I can't tell. I, it could be that she can't look him in the eye at that right. point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway. Yeah, it's funny. It is really funny. And Maki kind of considering having Tsubasa break her arm so that she oh can boss gosh. him around. It's like, hmm, maybe I'll do that. <laughs> How much does it hurt? <laughs> oh, Miki, Maki, don't do it. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, gosh. But um, there was also Miyuki talking about, you know, on, on the date 
Miyuki was talking about using the restroom, and Kaguya was thinking that he, she thought he was referring to something very, very lewd. <laughs> like, <laughs> like just, just that misunderstanding. For some reason, like, I, I just remember, like, when I read this volume the first time half a year ago, it was like, I, I, I died from that. Like, that was, like, the funniest thing. <laughs> this time, this time, I, I don't know if it was, like, my expectations, like, getting to that, I was, like, kind of had been looking forward to getting to that part again. Uh -huh. I, I didn't get as much of a kick out of it this time. I mean, I still, I still really liked it, but I just remember, like, the first time I was, like, dying reading mm. that part. <laughs> yeah, no, it was funny. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if I was dying, but... Yeah, I don't know why I was dying at that <laughs> the first time. I must have been in a weird mood. Uh, I don't know. And my last comedic bit is when Maki is in India and she's thinking about what Nagisa and Tsubasa are doing. Oh, <laughs> it's no. just like a full panel just full of pixels. It's like, whoa. Oh, <laughs> well, she, she's not uh, wrong. Is, is Severus uh, Snape that much of a love interest? Oh, my God. A, a pair, yeah. Like, is, is this a thing? I, well, when Osaragi said that at first, I was like, uh, I, I guess, like, it's not, it's nothing I ever thought, it's nothing I ever thought about, but maybe. But then Ray's response to it made me think that maybe, maybe Osaragi is the one who was weird. About <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there are fangirls. Oh, yeah, there's, yeah, there's gotta be. But I, I did, and yeah, I, I never thought that was like a big thing, at least. <laughs> yeah, and you usually think it's like Draco, uh, <laughs> yeah. Harry, or not. To, I don't think too many people were into Ron. Maybe they were. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, someone, <laughs> someone was. Hermione was. <laughs> right. Uh, this is not a Harry Potter mm. podcast, but it was just no. funny that that would get mentioned, <laughs> dropped in in this. Yeah. Anything more on comedy? It, it was it was a really funny volume, and I think we've mentioned quite a mm. bit of funny moments throughout. I think oh, the yeah. I think the balance between comedy and romance was excellent in this chat in this volume. Yeah, fantastic. Or or and drama in, in general. Oh, drama you know, too. Mm. I, I've been thinking about like because we we've had this romance section in the podcast ever since we started. I'm like I'm starting to think like if we should change it up to some to some extent. Hmm. Do we need a drama section instead or in addition to it or like i don't know maybe, maybe this is something we shouldn't talk about on recording but uh <laughs> i guess yeah i guess it's worth to think about maybe but but anyway let's talk about the romance now <laughs> anyway so yeah the volume starts off with kaga and miyuki being very lovey-dovey with each other <laughs> in the student council chambers really sweet very cute we had been just waiting for this for all all, all these volumes wanting them, them to be this close Really nice. Gosh, yeah, it was so nice. And what I thought was super cute was how Kaguya wanted to sort of wear matching clothes for their first date. So she came in her school uniform, assuming <laughs> Yuki would do the same thing. <laughs> but like this one time, he doesn't. <laughs> I thought that was super sweet. Because she has never, whenever they've met out, met, met up outside True. of school, she, she has never been in, in her school uniform. So this was like clearly an active choice for her, just assuming he would do the same thing too. But nope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I loved the like the, the all the little callbacks in the cinema part of the of the date. Yeah, that was nice. Even the the panel, I, I yeah, I, I sent you in our chat earlier like a little comparison. Like mm -hmm. he drew like basically from the same angle, the same thing, like the same the entrance of the cinema uh, place as they're walking into it. Basically the same thing, except this time they're dressed differently and they are walking into it, walking very close together, as opposed to the first time when they were kind of spread apart as they entered there really nice and and all the little other things about the getting the tickets and all that very nice right but i gotta say one thing that i'm a little bit disappointed in and it's not, it's not about the volume here it's about the anime and i think i mentioned this when we talked about the first volume since that's when they went to the cinema the first time mm -hmm. that chapter was never adapted in the anime right so that's going to make this scene when they get to this in the anime season like late season three or early season four or whatever it's going to be that's it's going to make it not as impactful i think they may not even have the theater scene at all fair fair yeah true they might they might just skip that all together that's true that's true in fact they probably should and like at, at, at this point mm. but i was a little bit disappointed in that right no same same 
I guess continuing on with that, the their mall date, which is precious. Mm-hmm. I, I I like how you know the baby kind of gets in between them. Yeah. And then, but then Kaguya quickly grabs his arm. Like, yeah. That was great. It's like, oh yes, we've reached that moment or we've reached that yeah. point. Right. Yeah. I, I love how they they really both are like taking steps to you know be close to each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Miyuki was the one who grabbed Kaguya's hand first, and then and then later on, as he said, she was the one who grabbed his arm. Mm-hmm. So they they both take those sorts of steps. It's not just Miyuki, like because at least in the previous volume, we kind of got the idea that Kaguya, you know, she wanted like a traditional kind of simple or well, yeah, it's, it's sort of a traditional kind of kind of old fashioned almost relationship where mm-hmm. the man kind of takes the initiatives and stuff like that. Is kind of the fantasy she has in her head, but. You know, the fact that she also took one of those little steps here in this scene was very nice. Yeah. And how she was also the one who made up her mind to confess her love for Miyuki on this date. So she was the one who actually said that she loved him or that she was in love with him, I think. Mm-hmm. And asked, asked him to be her boyfriend, yeah? Yeah, that exactly, exactly. Yeah, so I guess that means that team Kaguya lost, but... <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, I guess, I, did... I guess. I mean, it's, it's... Well, I mean... Kage mm. won at the end. I mean, they all they both won. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I did say that the way the story was going, I felt like Kage would be the one to confess, even though I still was hoping that Miyuki would do it first. Right. But at the, at, at the end of the day, they they were both practically confessing to each other anyway. Yeah. And, oh yeah. <laughs> and either way, they they've overcome so much of their pride and doubts that I think they've grown tremendously as characters and. To be, like we were saying last volume, I think Miyuki uh, still has some growth to do, and he, he, I imagine even Kage will do, will as well. But oh yeah, still it's it's great to see how far they've come, and it's it all led up to this moment, and I think it was a great build up. I yeah, I couldn't agree more. So now it's yeah, like even though at the beginning of this volume where they were very much basically in a relationship already, and like they they knew how they felt about each other, but at the end of it, it's even more like absolutely, you know. Yeah. It's they they are boyfriend and girlfriend now. Yeah, they're a couple. Woo! It's official. 16 volumes later. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anything more on the Miyuki and Kaguya ship romance talk? Nope. I I think I'm good about them. Cool. I had some things written down for the Yu and Tsubame romance, but I think we've talked about most of it already. Do you have anything there? Yeah, so Kashiwagi mentions that I think things are about to get very twisted and complicated because she's thinking about what's happening with Tsubame and then you know, Ishigami and seeing Ishigami with uh, Miko. Hmm. That That's what prompts her to say that. So I think that's probably fortuitous, not just in this volume, but potentially in the future that things could get a little messy however, in whatever way that be, turns out to be. But needless to say, like there's definitely some romance drama shenanigans that will will go down in the future yeah yeah uh i'm a little bit scared (laughs) but uh yeah it's gonna be good though so going along with that i my one of my predictions is ishigami might have to make a choice not that he knows it yet obviously because he's just he's just thinking about uh, tsubame at this point but there could be could be a moment where miko kind of comes to a conclusion on her feelings and then uh, and then Ishigami is also growing in his feelings for her but his feelings mm-hmm. with Tsubame kind of conflict and may- maybe Miko comes maybe she even confesses to him or or Tsubame kind of confesses in some way but as so either way I think I think he might have to make a choice and not and it may not be because they both confessed it could just because be be because he himself is at a point where he has to choose one or the other because you know there can only be one, <laughs> but <laughs> that's just my my thinking that it's going to get to that point eventually. Right, I, I I sort of have two fears for things that I I'd probably prefer not to see happen. I'll, I'll, of course, it depends. I'm sure I guess like I could make whatever work, uh, but I, I do have two things like kind of scenarios that I'm sort of hoping that won't happen. Okay, one of them is that both Miko and Tsubame will end up realizing they have romantic feelings for you and that you is going to have to disappoint one of them. Oh, yeah. Okay. Something I'm sort of dreading. Like, if that 
how it does happen. So with that in mind, I'm sort of hoping that Tsubame doesn't really develop feelings feelings mm-hmm. completely. Yeah. Um, of course, it could be really exciting, and the drama that comes from that would be pr- probably be really good. Mm-hmm. But it would be so sad too. It would be sad and uncomfortable. Um, right. I do like both of these characters. Uh-huh. Um, you know, Tsubami's definitely grown on me a lot, and I think she's become a really interesting character after this volume as well. So, oh, yeah. yeah, to to see her heartbroken would be yeah really sad. Mm. I think it could happen though, but at the same time, I think I'm with you that I don't particularly want to see it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> And the other thing I that I don't want to see, like, and this one I probably feel even stronger about, uh-huh. is that I don't want Miko to end up being used plan B or like his like... Oh, no, yeah. Like the, the, the girl that, she, that he just kind of settles with because the, the girl that he actually loved didn't, like, it didn't work out there. Like, I, I, mm-hmm. yeah. Totally. I, I don't want that at all. Yeah. So... I wonder how how that's gonna happen. Like, yeah, because at at this point we know that he feels the strongest for Tsubame. So mm-hmm. there there has to go be a transition somehow where, well, well assuming <laughs> assuming the Miko Yushif is is legit uh-huh. uh, in the first place. But then you has to well tr- transition from Tsubame over to Miko before he chooses Miko. I think. Mm. Yeah. That's why I think if you, at the same time as Miko uh, acknowledging her feelings for Ishigami, is able to see his own feelings for her, um, while not necessarily denying his feelings for Tsubame, it just kind of, it creates a quandary in him. And I think that prevents it from being a plan B kind of situation. Mm. Um, Now, you still run the risk of both of them both of the two girls confessing to him, but if it's but if it's more on the long li- along the lines of I feelings for both these these people, and he has he has to choose not because they confess to him, but because you know just which one is more important to him, I guess. Um, then mm-hmm. maybe that'd be okay. I mean, it's still I think there'll still be I still think there'll be heart heartbreaks, there'll be some sadness, but also I, it, it'll be nice when he chooses miko <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I, I i'm really like really curious to see how that's all going to progress yeah. like how is it all going to lead up to that <laughs> and it, it's funny like we both seem to feel this so strongly about this like this ship <laughs> uh and we're talking about it about it as if that was like 100 percent gonna happen and i yeah i do feel that way but at the same time like well we don't know we don't we don't actually and it, maybe it would be interesting if that didn't end up being the case now that we're so hmm. so set on that because th- this ship is is not as set in stone as you know the Miyuki Kage ship was which True. was set in stone from the beginning because th- we knew that they had to end up together from the start kind of because that was kind of what the whole thing was about meanwhile these two were weren't set up like as obviously from the start to have this ship hmm. i don't know i don't know of, of course i am still riding this ship though so yeah fair enough 100 <laughs> percent. but yeah just a thought a little bit about the romance again here uh on you was that he he is too much of a romantic to have sex with someone without uh the romantic feelings going both ways mm-hmm. which i mean we we have talked about it already but mm-hmm. just how strongly he feels about that is very commendable, I think. And, yeah. And he's really like an all or nothing kind of guy where, you know, if, if he's going to sleep with someone, it has to be, you know, there has to be love behind it all. Uh, meanwhile, Tsubame, at least right now, isn't, well, I, I obviously doesn't feel exactly like that um, as we learn. And I think... I mean, obviously, she might change her mind on that. We don't know how she's going to develop, mm-hmm. potentially. But I feel like even though they have a lot of respect for one another and all of that, they're probably not ideal romantic or sexual partners, at least at this point in time. Yeah, I I, mm, I don't know. Not saying I disagree. Um, I, <laughs> I think 
I think it's clear Miko and Ishigami are better for each for each other. But I do think that Tsubami and Ishigami could work out. Um, I think I think I think it's a relationship that would be healthy too, especially if Tsubami is able to get over some things. But is it as is it as is a perfect as perfect can be fit as Miko and Ishigami? No. But I I will I will say that that scene in the bedroom was uh, very steamy and um, mm-hmm. uh, you know it got me got me really excited I'll say that um, mm-hmm. it got my heart racing that's that's yeah. the, that's the word that's the words I wrote down here not kidding <laughs> yeah. got me excited um, <laughs> but like honestly like, it just imagine being in that situation and this this very attractive woman but like, puts herself on you it, it's mm. kind of it's like wow I, you know respect for Ishigami one just kind of still being calm and two letting her know is like hey I'm this is <laughs> this is getting me excited I guess uh mm-hmm. is that okay so yeah. it, it's very very gentlemanly in that sense it's very very innocent too true true yeah S- such a good scene such a good yeah, scene yeah it, it was <laughs> and there was one little moment between Miko and you that I wrote down as pretty romantic, at least in my mind, uh-huh. was when they had just tumbled down the stairs together mm. and they were lying there. And, you know, obviously they're both very emotional at the time, or especially Ishigami, you know, since he had just opened up about all those things that happened last night and he had just recently been crying. So, she, you know, he, he still has tears in his eyes and and obviously having just fallen down stairs is a big thing <laughs> and, and 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 miko yeah she's kind of scolding him but you know she just risked her life to save him sort of or to try to save him mm-hmm. and i don't know the that, that kind of just intimate situation between them there i i thought it was i thought it was sweet in its own way yeah i i agree that moment that moment was sweet um in it in it in its own way like it, it's a, it's a little different situation but i think it was a good moment between them yeah romantic i would even say yeah like miko even like it looks like she puts her hand like on on you's cheek or something like i think she? so i think i'm gonna double check yeah <laughs> uh yeah or at least like she touches his hair or like something i mean that's that's pretty romantic right just that angle and everything i mean yeah uh just kiss <laughs> <laughs> you two should kiss. Um, uh, if, if you haven't figured it out, we're really big Ishigami Miko shippers. <laughs> yep. Oh yes. You Miko all the way. <laughs> all the way. So yeah, do we have anything more on romance? So I just want to apologize for earlier we were talking about the true love concept, and I didn't mean to cross you on it. I per se, obviously, I, I was disagreeing, but. I do think true love is a concept that is kind of enforced and, you know, it does start to make you believe in true love as it goes about it. And I, I, if I was upsetting you, I'm sorry about that. Uh, I, I think that it it is fair to say that that is a theme throughout Miyuki and Kaguya's kind of journey, relationship journey, that true love does exist as long as the two parties are looking for it and searching for it. And I think that's what Akasaka is trying to say that yeah. Miyuki and Kaguya have found. Um, I mean, they just started, but I, I think they've, I, I think it's fair to say that they, they've found <laughs> true love. I, yeah, dude, totally. And no hard feelings. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, well, we, I, we were sort of in the ending piece of discussion here, but a little prediction sort of thing that I thought of that I think was introduced back in volume seven during the election campaign speeches, at least I think Kaguya in her speech for, you know, presenting Miyuki, she mentioned the like class or school trips. Uh, That's an event that happens. And if I recall, it happens at the beginning of the year. Oh, Uh, so I'm thinking potentially, if if I'm even right here, potentially that would happen, maybe next volume or or at least in a volume that's coming soon, 
Maybe. Cool. So just something that crossed my mind. We can get some spicy stuff there. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Should be fun. And, and it's always fun with the change of scenery. Of course, I, I, I love the, the classical like uh, student council chambers setting. Totally. You know, the, we've had so many good times there and I still have, I'm not tired of it. Mm -hmm. But the previous volume and this one both gave us some, you know, some new, new scenes kind of or new areas, uh, which, you know, was really nice. It's, it's a fresh change of pace. So I, of course, I always welcome that. Agreed. And yeah, as I said at the beginning of the discussion, we are now caught up to how far, like, as far as I had read. So this was actually the first discussion uh, on this podcast about Kaguya-sama that I did completely unspoiled. Woot! Uh, seeing as I have not read anything past this volume, and that's how it's going to remain for all of the coming volumes for both me and James. Uh, so I'm super excited to keep doing this podcast spoiler-free, 100%. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's going to be much, much more, more fun, I think. I mean, it's already been a lot of fun, but it's going to be, I think yeah. it's going to be even more fun to, you know, especially for speculations and theories and stuff like that. Oh my I, gosh. I, don't, I, won't, I won't have to hold myself back or anything. Because <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that has been a little bit hard sometimes. Now, I, I won't be the only dumb one. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'll be, I'll be dumb too now. Uh, yeah. And yeah, uh, as I said also, volume 17 has been waiting in my bookshelf for months. I am going to start reading that right as we are done recording this super excited for that Woot. and yeah uh favorite characters briefly ha has uh, i'm actually especially curious has miko's change has miko's place changed at all for you mm. yeah uh for sure and i think in my last list i totally forgot Su subame um oh yeah we didn't right right i would have put i would have put her above kashiwagi even at that point in my opinion mm. I think I think I put I think I even put Subami higher, but 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 Miko is higher than Subami, so Subami is probably in or Miko is probably in. I probably put her in the top five right now. Um, nice, nice. I actually don't remember what I put her last time, but I think she's above Ayasaka at this point for me. And no, I can't put above Chika. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's fair. <laughs> or or Miyuki or Ishigami or them, but so so basically, your top five are the five student council members. I think so. Uh, and then I think six would be, uh, sorry, Hayasaka, I think six would be Tsubame. I, I really like, mm. I really like Tsubame and she thinks she brings yeah. an interesting aspect to Ishigami's character and could going forward. Uh, but then it's ha Hayasaka and et cetera, et cetera. Nice, nice. Very nice. And for me, I, I, I'm just starting to have more, uh, like it's just harder and harder for me to put them in any order. Miko is still my clear number one though. Of course. But then two two to four, like you, Miyuki, and Kaguya, like those three places, I don't know which order those go in. Mm. Yeah, that's uh, tough. Like I can't really decide that. But th those are my top four anyway, and I don't know exactly the order. But after that, probably Maki, then maybe Hayasaka followed by Tsubame there, perhaps. Something mm. like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yeah, definitely, especially in this volume, Tsubami grew for me, uh, for yeah. like, especially for like me being able to relate to her kind of struggles in a lot of ways, and mm -hmm. also the focus that she got, and and yeah, yeah, a, lo a lot of the things that we talked about. Totally. All right then, I guess that it, that's it for our discussion about volume sixteen. Woot! Sorry, I keep saying woot. It's like I'm back in 2010 or something like that. <laughs> it's all good. I mean, I don't know when this when these books take place. <laughs> so maybe, maybe, you know, that's closer to 2010 than we are oh, You now. sound like a middle, only middle-aged men say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> In the words of Onodera. Uh, ye crazy, huh? Ye crazy, yeah. huh? <laughs> it's funny, like, trends only last for, like, a month. Oh, it's like, so true, though. <laughs> it's too too true. It's funny because it's true. It's, it's true. Have you heard that people are now trying to stop? Or it's like cringe to say cringe. Have you heard that? What? I have not heard that. I must be a middle-aged man. Well, yeah, we'll discuss this later <laughs> yeah. together as middle-aged men. Yes. We Even will. though we're not. <laughs> not. Not yet, no. Not yet. <laughs> Very important. We're only in our 20s. Uh, so if you enjoy our content, you can follow us on Twitter at Umami Manga. And if you like this episode, please share it around with anyone you think might enjoy it too. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time where we'll talk about Volume 17. Bye-bye. See ya.
but one of the nights when you know I, I i'm pretty sure most of us in the room were already like you know in our beds trying to trying to fall asleep some guy comes in pretty sure he was an american he sounded american mm. and was just really this really loud voice like this like really like fr- speaking like from the stomach like very like steady loud voice like where's the toilet where's the toilet oh like ah oh, he woke everybody up like no ah oh, i was so i was so mad although i didn't do anything i was just like fucking shut up in my head <laughs> i'm so sorry 